Thank you. Thank you for spending my birthday with me. I'm on Medicare, 65, the big number, thank you. And 18 years ago today, on my birthday, this building opened up in 2001. And I spent that birthday here as well. Anybody else here for the opening of the Boca Raton Museum in Meisner Park? Hi, 18 years. All right, so we'd like to thank the Florida Humanities Speakers Bureau. This is generously uh, sponsored by them. And on a good day, I travel through the state of Florida and I spread art and culture of the Palm Beaches through the rest of the state. And I also want to thank our executive director, Irvin Littman, and our Adult and Community Programs Director, Dwayne Smith, who introduced me. Thank you, guys. Thank you very, very much. So, I've given this lecture since August, I don't know, 10, 15 times, but never the same. I make it fit the audience. Today we're in Boca Raton, so you have all new, un unseen, things that we have to see. The Art Deco Society of the Palm Beaches, I have about 80,000 images of art and architecture in our archives. So we're gonna share some things today with you about Boca Raton and myself. So it looks like at age 14, I painted my first mural. That's over 50 years ago. We didn't even have pictures in those days. So here we are at a birthday party for my nephew, who's now 48. But what happened was my sister got married, and she said, oh, let's paint a mural, my older sister. So we got some masking tape and some stripes. There was my fiance at the time. And I got some red paint, and I got some black paint. And when we pulled off the tape, a white line appeared. So first thing I did, I went home and painted my bedroom, right? I love, wow, this was fun. It was big. I like big things. And I painted the steps, this like kind of Egyptian motif. It turned out it was like an Art Deco motif, this zigzag, these steps. And of course, I had olive green shag carpet. <laughs> And these were some sculptures I made in college. I became a sculptor and a photographer in college. So my sister moved her apartment, got a second apartment, and uh, now I learned how to make rounded corners. Wow, how did I do that? Well, how did I get the black line? Well, what I did was first I painted the entire wall black, and then I put the tape on the wall, but tape doesn't curve. So I had to put a lot of tape on the wall and hand cut with a razor blade each curve. And it turned out that Art Deco was all about threes. One, two, three. And it turned out Art Deco was about speed. And this looks like a train and speed. And it turned out Art Deco was all about straight lines. And that we know I was very good at. Okay. In fact, I just gave, uh, I was a keynote speaker in Perpignan, France, and I was talking about Art Deco, and I don't speak French. How do you give a lecture in France? I would go, un, deux, trois, un, deux, trois. And then, you know, one, two, three, they got it. So I was always really attracted to Egypt and my bucket list. Just last month, I went to Egypt finally, and I lived through my, my bucket list, because we saw that Egyptian motif I painted at age 14. So uh, I'm, still, I'm still in the Egyptian time zone. I get my own apartment when I graduate college. I love New York. When you live in New York, everything is about architecture. And of course, we see the sculptures I painted in college. I made the table. I built in the, the furniture. And uh, we have the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building. If you recall, the twin, uh, the twin towers, we didn't love them architecturally. 
I mean, of course, we didn't want them to burn down, but they were all the way down there. They were, they, they, you know, we loved the Art Deco, the Rockefeller Center, Chrysler Building. So in New York, I joined the Art Deco Society of New York, which is still in existence. This is the 84. And here we see again the one, two, three, see how it steps up, the zigzag. And Art Deco is about speed and wild animals. So you see the eagle, and it's overlooking the Empire State Building. And I designed the graphics in this magazine. And I was making a living designing needlepoint. It was very popular at that time. And I would go to trade shows. And of course, there's my beloved New York and my mural. And to this day, people still ask me, they know me as the needlepoint lady, and I still design needlepoint. You sew it, it's on a grid, a vertical and horizontal canvas. I went to New York School of Design. I mastered color theory. So here's a painting I was doing before I left New York. And in a painting, you put a lot more uh, design and elements into it rather than a big mural. Right, because it's a smaller canvas, it could handle the details. But we see I use gold and the silver, gold and silver metallic, straight lines. Wow, how do you do a circle, huh? Well, you use templates and tools. But as soon as you move to Florida, you start painting purple palm trees. You don't paint purple palm trees when you live in New York with a little Art Deco border. I came to work at the Boca Raton School of Art on Palmetto Park Road, right? And if we notice now, just look at it, it has a, that same little zigzag design that I painted when I was 14, right? This could be any John Wayne Western movie. This could have been the, the, the corral, the bar, the saloon, right? There's something about those steps up and step down that we, we think is very good design. So I meet Barbara Capitman, you know, I was known as the Art Deco lady in New York. They said, oh, if you love Art Deco, you have to go meet this woman. Barbara Bayer Capitman, the queen of Art Deco. And she says, Sharon Koskoff, you will start the Art Deco Society of the Palm Beaches. I'm a mural artist. What do I know about preservation and 501c3 organization? But I learned everything. Uh, the mayor gave me an award in 1988. And I painted the Jazz Man, and we used the Jazz Man as our logo for the Art Deco Society of the Palm Beaches, and we were on our way. I wrote my first book, Art Deco of the Palm Beaches. It came out 10 years ago for Arcadia Press, and it's black and white. That's history books. It's the local history. And people said, oh, well, we know there's Art Deco in Miami. We didn't know there was Art Deco in the Palm Beaches. So along the eastern regions of Delray, Lake Worth, and West Palm Beach, we're going to find Art Deco architecture. There's no Art Deco in Boca Raton. I've looked. There's one little eyebrow on Dixie Highway, and we'll learn about that soon. So the Armory Art Center, it turns out, was built in 1939 by William Manley King, and it's a historic building. It's now an art school, similarly to Boca Museum of Art, art school. And it was done by the WPA, Works Progress Administration. Okay, so they were painting up all these buildings in South Beach, Right, you had Miami Vice in the 80s. Everything was pink and green and peach. I said, let's paint up this building. Because it's bigger than a mural. A mural is just a wall inside a building. But now you're painting the whole outside of a building. What a great experience. So we painted it in peach green and uh, lavender, which is primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Secondary colors are green, purple, orange. And these were the tints, the pastels, green, purple, orange. And that was so shocking. In 1987, it was shocking that we put a little bit of color on a building. <laughs> this is what it looks like today. They uh, have a sculpture building with a blue roof and they match the blue. Uh, I also invite you, we have a lecture series at the Armory Art Center called Art Deco Second Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Uh, someone's flying in from Chicago, Art Deco, this almost Valentine's Day, February 13th at 7 p.m. So let's look at the building, though. 
It steps down, just like that first mural I painted. It has fluted ribbing, that's Art Deco. We see here an eyebrow. An eyebrow is a flat, linear plane, a shelf that would protect you from the sun. It's, it's, it's functional, but in a flat shelf above a window, an eyebrow is Art Deco. Always a flat roof, never an A-frame roof. And this is what it looks like in the book, and we really see the stepping up, the stepping down, the eyebrows, one, two, three, un, deux, trois, right? So actually, the Art Deco we have in Palm Beach County is called Streamline Moderne, which is the absence of man's idiosyncratic embellishments. Whew, that's a big word. Streamline modern is minimal. It's absent of the design. It's kind of like Bauhaus's to Germany, right? It's all of this that we're talking about, Art Deco and Streamline modern. it's really the beginning of modernism, modern life, the machine age, the industrial revolution. So, you all have a, a sheet that I gave you out today. It will talk about everything I just talked about, what is Art Deco and the elements and things like that. Okay, so, so the Armory Art Center is a WPA project. So is the Flagler Museum, the, the Flagler Bridge, the Lake Worth Bridge, and the Camino Real Bridge right here in Boca Raton are WPA projects. Our, our Boca Raton Camino Real Bridge. So what happened was in the Great Depression, Franklin Delano Roosevelt wanted to inspire Americans and what they did was they employed artists to talk about American life and history. What they wanted to do is build the infrastructure of America, something that we really need to do even today, rebuild our infrastructure. The 1920s Mexican murals, the Renaissance, it worked in Mexico, it inspired public pride. It was something that they needed in the Great Depression. And I hope you all after today also see the, the lovely photos in this room are from the Depression era in black and white. And they, they, they showed the common man, the everyday man at work and lives of people during the Depression. So Roosevelt hired dozens of artists and they painted murals in schools, post offices, and they did books and sculptures, and they celebrated American art in civic institutions. So when we talk about murals, well everyone, first thing that comes to mind is Diego Rivera. And murals have always been controversial, always. You like them, you don't like them, they're good, they're not good, right? Murals, they create a dialogue. People talk about them. They're outraged, or they're beautiful, or they're a landmark, right? Meet me, or they're a photo opportunity, right? People are enamored with murals. By the way, Diego was married to Frida Kahlo. Right? We've heard of Frida Kahlo, we've seen the movie. She was a female artist. Can we name five female artists? Yes. Georgia O'Keeffe. Mary. Mary. Sharon Koskoff. <laughs> well, it turns out that Diego was a communist and he paints a portrait of Lenin right in the middle of Rockefeller Center just before John D. Rockefeller is about to reveal this massive mural to the public. Right there, look at that. He put, put in the communists and Rockefeller is outraged and he covers it up and doesn't let anyone see the mural. So Diego Rivera goes back to Mexico and he paints the mural again so everyone can see it in Mexico because he's so proud to be a communist. And I've seen that mural if you go to Mexico City. You'll see it there now. So murals have always been controversial. The WPA, they hired writers and poets and musicians. And, and, as, and as I said, they built Hoover Dam, they built tunnels and bridges and post offices and schools and museums, all things to enrich the life of the, the, the Depression era people, put them to work, use their creativity. And we were all familiar with the name Zora Neale Hurston, folk songs, she was from Florida. Okay, 
So now I'm writing my second book, Murals of the Palm Beaches. It's kind of like I want to live my, leave my legacy. I want to document. And there's so many murals, thousands and thousands of murals. You know, which one gets in the book? And you, know, you could write a book about each individual mural. So we're going to have a taste of all the murals in Palm Beach County. And what they do is they, they kind of tell us how we got here today, right? There's, with these street art murals that we're going to talk about. So when I wrote the book, Art Deco, it was easy. It didn't go by date. It was the 1930s. All the pictures were from the 1930s, right? I did it by neighborhood. I did Delray, Lake Worth, Palm Beach, West Palm. That was easy. When I wrote this book, though, it didn't look right to put a fish picture next to a post office picture, right? So I wrote this book by theme, and, the, and these are the... Uh, the chapters, figurative, aquatic, flora and fauna, earth above and beyond, abstract thinking, unconventional undertakings. So our earliest murals, our earliest buildings, <laughs> our history in Florida only starts in the 1900s. It's a challenge to find a building that's older, right? You go to New York, buildings are 300 years old. You go to Europe, buildings are 600 years old. Europe. Uh, uh, you know, there's caves, there's all kinds of things. In Florida, you know, we tear down the building after 20 years, uh, we want to build a new one. So it, it, preservation it has to be, you know, considered. So the Flagler Museum was from 1902, the Gilded Age. And this is a large mural. There are 14 other murals. This is in the book. And this is not Art Deco. This is very romantic. Right? Very Art Nouveau, feminine and flowery, and, and angels flying with wings. Very romantic. Art Deco is the opposite. It's hard edge, masculine, speed, geometric. There's another ceiling from the Flagler Museum. I mean, just beautiful. These are very large rooms. There's 14 of them. And this is in uh, County Road in Palm Beach, the Flagler Museum. It's known as Whitehall. Okay, this just opened up this week under a new restoration. The Society of Four Arts is drama, art, music, and literature. And there are four murals here. They were covered for a while. They've been revealed. And here we, we see this is the entrance to the King Library. And this is from the book, Murals of the Palm Beaches. And this is from the shiny sheet. It was just restored originally by Albert Herder, now by Xenon Toxic who just restored them and uh, quite lovely just a few weeks ago. All right, so if we go to our post office, the Summit Boulevard post office, if you're gonna mail your taxes late, that's where you go. <laughs> They're open till midnight on April 15th. So you can get that postmark. You'll see the murals of Stephen Dohannes. And it's the legend of the James Edward Hamilton barefoot mailman. There are six panels. They're there right in plain view for you to see them. And we have the sketches right here in our exhibit today at the Boca Museum, Imagining Florida. Also, there's a push button. Uh, press the button on Florida history outside, an interactive game. That was one of the questions. Barefoot mailman was the answer. Here are the six murals. Because the post office, to deliver the mail through the Everglades, oh my, the alligators. Okay, and, and the story is that one day he disappeared. They found the uh, boat, but no mailman. Okay, here he is at the light, lighthouse, the Jupiter Lighthouse, stamping the mail and carrying packages. It, might, it really must have been a hardship, be, you know, before air conditioning. <laughs> and the, the nightlife. Another post office that you can still see a WPA mural is in downtown Lake Worth on Lucerne Avenue. And this is Joseph Myers. It's a small mural. It's right there, done in kind of muted colors. Uh, also with the alligator and the dog. And when you do a public mural, you have to answer to a lot of people, the people who are hiring you to paint, and they didn't like the dog or the alligator, and it took him five years to paint till they paid him. <laughs> the U.S. Post Office in Palm Beach was a WPA project. Charles Rosen, 1937, you have these three panels, 
Uh, this is in my book, Art Deco of the Palm Beaches, in black and white. Here's the Seminole Indian. Now this is the building. It's no longer a post office. Jeff Green, the billionaire who was just running for uh, governor, he bought this building. So you can actually walk up the steps and look through the window and see the murals. But it's now a law office. It's no longer a public post office. But I'm sure he's going to keep the historic qualities intact. Okay, Jay Clinton Shepard was a former uh, gallery director at the Norton Museum of Art. And he had his studio. Now he's painting a mural on canvas. It's the only black and white picture in my mural book. And we'll look at this. We're going to see the colored picture. But look at that raccoon. We're going to look at him later. OK. Wow, look at that raccoon. Look how big he is. He's as big as the deer. So he didn't really care about perspective or scale when he was painting the Everglades. Here's the full picture. And the Cluiston Inn is open right now. I stayed there. I gave a talk to Cluiston. And we stayed in the Cluiston Inn. And we had a drink in the bar. And it was really so lovely. So beautiful. There's, there's the bar. <laughs> and a detail. Right here, also in Palm Beach, were these Lee Olson murals of like the conquistadors, the Spanish conquistadors, you know, fountain of youth. And there are four, three ways to paint a, a tile mural, three ways to create a tile mural. One would be this way, little colored tiles, like these are white, so it would be white, 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 blue, 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 and over here would be white, 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 then a green, then a dark green, then a brown, right? You just line them up, so you're using colored tiles. Another way would be to have white four inch tiles, put them in a studio and paint a design and fire them. Now this is a Patty Mills mural. I showed you the one in Boca Raton, Hidden Valley. And she has painted 200 murals in Publixes all over the state of Florida. And I've been, as I travel through Florida, I see a Publix and I run out and I take a picture. And I said, wow, I would love to meet Patty Mills. I would love to meet Patty Mills. You've seen them all the place. Southern Boulevard, Delray is in danger right now. We're building a new Publix. So I go on a search this summer to find Patty Mills. And I find her in Winter Haven. But we went to Winter Park by mistake, which is where the Morse Museum is, the, the, the wonderful Tiffany Museum, Art Nouveau, a must-see if you've never been there. It's like Delray with a with the Morse Museum. So it's okay. We just drove an hour and we met with Patty Mills. She went a hoot, you know, she's in her late 80s and she's doing these other women's clubs, and she was like working at Bush Gardens with a clay, she was a clay artist. And they said to her, Hey, Patty, you know, because uh, uh, Publix uh, Lakeland is not far from there. And they saw her at this show, Oh, can you do a, a Publix mural? Oh, yes, she says, I'm a master. She lied. She's so cute. And from there, she just did whatever she wanted. They paid her, and she did another one, and they paid her. She had a huge studio. Um, she lost it all now in her divorce, but she was so cute. Right now, you can see this mural, Bernard Thomas uh, in the Scottish Rite Temple in Lake Worth. This is what we call an epic mural. Um, it's like the whole size of this wall, I would say, but not this tall. And it's King Solomon's Temple, and he did research. It's in Boynton. He, he did this in the 80s. Uh, he lived in Boynton. He, he went to visit. They blindfolded him so he wouldn't know the location. And he painted this mural. It really is an epic mural. And they're very proud. If you go visit them there, they'll give you even a poster maybe if you're lucky. But you see the sweat of the people building the pyramids and the temples and how hard they had to work. Bernard Thomas also did this with his students at the Boynton Beach Women's Club, which is Addison Meisner 1925 National Trust for Historic Preservation. It's wonderful to get a building on the National Trust for Historic Preservation Registry. It, it, it means you, it protects the building from being demolished, hopefully, and the building lives on. Robert Bushnell, 1957. This, this 
disappeared this mural. This was in the Royal Poinciana Playhouse in the celebrity room. And then they covered it up with like some kind of office ceiling. And they know it's there, but we can't uncover it. And, and, and they fight to save the building. They want to tear it down in Palm Beach. You know, public art, public buildings, all this controversy. This is here right now. You can see the Chesterfield Hotel, Mario Lino. They were going to paint over this building, this mural. And then they realized, wow, this is an attraction. Why paint it over? So it's kind of sexy women with goats. <laughs> <laughs> a swirling above the ceiling <laughs> while you eat and dance with the Palm Beaches. Aha, the Boca Raton Museum of Art. 14 and a half feet by 55 feet. And it opened on January 24th, 2001, which is exactly 18 years ago today. It was originally painted in the, for the Southland, Southland Center in Dallas, and it was a gift of the New York Life Insurance Company. Wow. Right? When you see that mural, you feel closer to, to God, like spiritual, like you're in a church. It is really the colors and the depth of the, of the mural. Well, when I was 19 and I was in Brooklyn College and I was a sculpture major, Al Held was married to Sylvia Stone, my teacher. And she used to say things like, oh, Al, love that chicken I made last night. Or Al worked too late, he didn't come home for dinner last night. I didn't know Al held who he was, I was 19. But seeing his paintings, of course, we all know how well known he is now. Also in our lobby here in the Boca Raton Museum of Art, we have another kind of mural by Jose Alvarez de Opie. Now this mural is different. The other mural is one piece of canvas done in a studio. One piece of canvas. This is done in a computer, digitally, and then blown up and wallpapered onto a wall. So it could be any size, it could be any colors, and it could be temporary or it could be permanent. And it's a great photo opportunity when you leave here, you should all take a picture. So in the 90s, I'm working at the Armory Art Center, I'm working with the kids. Everywhere I paint a mural, I bring them. And uh, it's messy. Painting murals is hard. Someone asked me what kind of paint I used on my jacket. Well, just gallons of house paint. What other kind of paint is there? Uh, working on panels, we put it on Clamata Street for temporary construction. I put my little dog in there at the time, little yum yum. Worked at other places, Good Samaritan Hospital with the kids. Well, just recently, even though it's a historic building, WPA, Leslie Davidson and Alex Kellington put on a ceramic tile mural. Now, this is the third way to do a mural. One is colored tiles. One is tiles that you paint. And one would be where you draw a design and you put in broken pieces to fit, like puzzle in the color. So that's a third way to make a mosaic tile mural. This I outlined in Mira. So anyway, I'm the mural lady. I'm working over at the armory. Everyone thinks, oh, I love that mural you painted, you know, that ceramic tile mural you're doing at the armory. And I said, no, no, that's not me. So what I did was I went and volunteered a few weeks so, so people wouldn't feel, you know, like they wouldn't feel like I was lying. <laughs> and this is what it looks like today. When you drive at night, the mirrors uh, kind of go in your eyes. By the way, glass block is an art deco element. The glass block keeps out the heat and keeps in the cool air. Where is that? <clears throat> that was at the Armory Art Center in West Palm Beach, 811 Park Place. The Norton Museum asked me to do a, a mural for one of their uh, restorations in the year 2000 when they were expanding. And I said, okay, what kind of mural would you like? Ooh, multicultural. So I said, I don't know. Do we really want multicultural? Isn't everything multicultural? I know, you're a museum. Let's do treasures of the permanent collection. Let's highlight your exhibit. So we put in uh, the Matisse and the Brancusi and the Moreau and the Andy Warhol and the Van Gogh and the Cezanne. And when they closed for uh, reconstruction now, because they're opening February 9th, for two years, all of these were on display, and I was like so proud. I picked the right, the right paintings for the mural. 
So they were doing temporary installations one year in their lobby. And this would be uh, stripes and, and curves. This is Terry Haggerty, 2014. I could have done that, right? I'm the tape master. <laughs> The next one was Micheline Thomas in 2017. She's very popular now. She's an African-American female artist. And she also put this in a computer, this collage, and printed it out as wallpaper. But she took it one step further and she came in person and did some painting overlay. We would call that a mixed media because it's more than one medium. It's collage and paint. Okay, in Lake Worth, we have the Lake Theater of Royer Benjamin, 1939. So here we see the Art Deco rounded corners, the little stepping down, one, two, three, one, two, three, twice, one, two, three. We see the eyebrow, we see the glass block, the, the ribbing. Okay, and this is what it looked like in the 50s. It was a pasta palace. <laughs> This is what it looks like today. It's the home of the Cultural Council. They have an art gallery there. It's free. You can go visit in downtown Lake Worth. And I painted the fire hydrant. We had a Veterans Day parade, and artists got together, and we painted in oil paint, which is very difficult, you know, uh, the, the armed forces. Naturally, I picked a female merchant marine. And then after 10 years, it got a little gamey. And this was their 40th anniversary, so I went back and restored it so it would be fresh. <laughs> but on the back of that building, right now, as we speak, is a new street artist, Eduardo Cobra. He's one of the most international famous artists around right now. And this was spray painted. So this is the back of the Art Deco building, the Cultural Council, that used to be the Lake Theater, downtown Lake Worth. So what you'll notice when we start seeing the street arts, street artists use spray paint. We used to call them graffiti artists. But graffiti is illegal and it's, it's not sanctioned. Now, public art asks these artists to come, pay them money, and they're sanctioned and it's called street art. So they're not going to jail, they're not losing their lives, they're not getting run over by trains. It's, it's healthier for everyone and they get to express themselves. So of course we see Martin Luther King. So what you're gonna notice about street art, when I started researching my book, street art is usually abstract or portraits or abstract portraits. This artist just did in, Man in Manhattan for, we just had September 11th in honor of uh, 911, a four-story building. Just beautiful. This is still Eduardo Cobra. And again, we see the abstract over the, the figure. Just lovely. Um, I'm Midtown. I don't have the address. I could get that for you. We could look it up easily. Al Black. One of the highwaymen, we're, we're probably familiar with the highwaymen. Um, up in Fort Pierce, 26 artists learned uh, from their teacher how to paint pictures of Florida. Uh, Gary Monroe wrote this book, uh, Al Black's Concrete Dreams. Al Black went to jail. What happened was these artists were making a lot of money. Uh, they weren't allowed to show in galleries black artists. So they would sell art out of their cars, hence called the highwaymen. And they lived life in the fast lane. They were making money hand over fist. You know, who wouldn't come to Florida buy a, a beautiful painting of a palm tree, right, a poinciana. So they had a lot of money. They liked women and the fast lane and drinking. Al Black winds up in jail. And when his warden finds out, he allows him to paint murals. And if you'll notice the, the concrete block, okay, this is one of Al Black's murals. So I did the same thing. I go into jails, I've done Port St. Lucie, I've done West Palm Beach, and I've done Broward, where I went into the jail with incarcerated youth and we painted murals. And uh, we paint big murals. But it's very hard to paint on concrete block. And this was a room, like an isolation room that, you know, when, they want to separate people and put them in a very small environment. We opened it up to make it more tolerable instead of being like in a little closet. So we painted this little open air kind of scene. 
This is up in West Palm. So what happened though, when I got to Florida, I was painting mostly residential, although the book is strictly art in public places, public art. And I started getting grants from the Cultural Council to work in the community, organize the community, and, and restore a multicultural neighborhood. Okay? You know, when I moved to Del Rey 33 years ago, there wasn't a person on the street. Right? Now, things have changed. So we did the Love's Drug mural. Here's the Love's Drugs. This is the back. It's 14 feet by 67 feet. It's in Pineapple Grove. We put the pineapples. It was a 50s building, so we put a little 50s brick, a little Art Deco here. This is uh, very important. We were afraid of graffiti, so we planted a garden, because graffiti artists don't like to walk through gardens. <laughs> so here's some details. This is the old train station, and now this, the, the, the garden is growing. The tomato crepe man, you can see the pineapples, and the pavilion by the sea. Here is Dr. Dr. Fred Love. And then after 10 years, 20 years, I forget how long, they were going to build the old school square parking garage and tear down my building, my first mural. So this, I went to the city, and they thought I was going to fight them. They thought I was going to say, you can't tear it down. I'll fight you. I'll get in the newspaper, and I'll... No, you can't do that. You have to work together. You have to be a community. So I said, it's OK that you're tearing the building down, but I want a closing. I want a big party. All the people that painted that building, come on out and say goodbye. So they gave us a cake and a tent and a microphone. <laughs> you know, the city knew it was the right thing to do. And Jay Alpert, who wished me happy birthday this morning, a former mayor, uh, he came and spoke. And Bill Nix, the number two man at the Cultural Council, came and spoke. And the night before this event, I'm in the bathtub, and I'm, I'm, my mind is racing. And I go, if they're going to tear down the mural, I'm going to be the one to destroy it. So we got spray paint, and at the party, we took spray paint, and we spray painted all over our mural. Loves drugs, old school square, happy things, by Sharon.com. I love Del Rey. All right? And then the newspapers came and took pictures of us destroying our own mural. And then the demolition people waited for me to arrive for the first demolition, which I have on video. I got some of the bricks, and there it was. So I saw this mural from, boy, beginning, middle, end, closure, right? It hurt, especially because it was Delray and I saw it all the time. But let's get back to when I first painted that. The same time that I got the grant, Roxanne Solomon got a grant, and they painted a mural in Lake Worth. This little big wall, similar to another wall that we've heard of. It was called. This wall in Lake Worth is called the Wall of Hate. Similar to another wall that we're talking about these days. Anyway, artists came and painted pieces of the wall. This is what it looks like today. It has not been destroyed yet. It's all faded. They're thinking of uh, restoring it. And artists came and painted. And here were some other murals going on at the time. This is R.J. Duffy. He used to bring his kids to my class. Uh, he painted this on Clamata Street. And he really didn't know how to paint murals. Can you tell? He got up on the ladder, and he stood here, and he painted here. And then he moved the ladder, and then he painted here. And then he moved the ladder here. So everything is just, you can see, he, he painted this figure, and he moved over, and he painted this figure. He does have this one big thing. But he didn't really think of the whole wall as a one singular mural. But it's still very quite large. In Lake Worth, we have these Art Deco buildings, the stepping up, the stepping down for the art shop. And on the other side is Bruce Weber and Marion Weber. They were in the street painting in Lake Worth. They painted this, the Shops of Florida, right? And it was a lovely little mural, right? These murals are still all historical, right? Everything that you, you see are historical murals from the 80s and 90s. It's now this, street, street art. And uh, it's what we said it was. It's geometric and it's portraits. And uh, 
diff big difference, but th the walls are now rotating. And then Gail Sliverbeck, right next to that wall that Marianne painted, they built on scaffolding this Where the Tropics Begin mural. So what happened was Delray had the Love's Drug mural, and Lake Worth now had the shops and the tropics. Well, that just wouldn't do. I live in Delray. We can't have one mural, and now Lake Worth has three, even though I thought I could never do that again. Also, right now, in that same parking lot, they painted over the tropics, and that's, this is there. This is a homage to Roy Lichtenstein's The Kiss. It's by an artist named Deface. <laughs> you, you recognize the uh, Roy Lichtenstein? Yeah. But, he, but, but not with the scar. The scar is original. But here are those three windows, by the way. Where is that? This is in a parking lot on Lucerne and J Street, right now in downtown Lake Worth. Okay, so we're back to 1995. We have the Love's Drug in Del Rey, and in Lake Worth they have the other two. So I say, well, we're going to do two murals <laughs> in Del Rey to catch up. And this is one of my favorite pictures. This is, this is what West Atlantic Avenue looked like in the 90s. Notice the lower phone, because that's for handicapped drug dealers. You had to lower the phone. And they made a lot of money from these phones. So they didn't want to get rid of them. I come along and said, you got to get rid of these phones, you got to get rid of this, you got to get rid of this, you got to get rid of that air conditioning unit. And they did. And when we just painted the wall white, the city called me to thank me and said, wow, the, the building looks great. Just leave it like that. We're happy. No. I had to fight for approval and, 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 and drag it out all over again. But it's good when you fight for something that you believe in. But by the time we were done, we had them dancing in the streets. We painted this. We painted the future of Del Rey with the music and the cafes. Of course, Gladiola's was the uh, Gladiola capital of the world, uh, Del Rey, with the little Art Deco one, two, three. And here we planted marigolds. And the other wall, it was an homage to Flora Days by Dan Blanding, who wrote a book of poetry. And all the Everglades and the fun and the flowers. So I, I'd say we improved the neighborhood. So that mural was there like 10 years. I pass it by every day going from east to west on Atlantic Avenue. And one day when they were expanding the building, and I knew they were expanding the building, I should have gone and touched it up. And one day, it was beige. That, that hurt. So I went on, though, every year for the next eight years. I was the only artist on record to continue. I did eight years of community murals throughout, throughout uh, Delray and Palm Beach County. And what I noticed, I was tired of fighting with the city. There were no rules. There were no public art advisory boards. There were no ordinances in place to give direction to, to, to tell them what to ask, what the limitations were, which there are now. But I said, you know what? I found out if you paint a mural in a public school in Palm Beach County, only the principal has the final word. If the Palm Beach County school right in the city limits, the principal has the final word. So we started painting public schools on main streets. The city would call me, and they couldn't do anything. So in the meantime, though, I was painting murals. I did two murals in Palm Beach uh, International Airport. Uh, there's the pilot. Uh, we did the, the coral reef under the water. And we did Concourse C, Welcome to Palm Beach, you know, kind of the buildings and the sailing, the intracoastal. Uh, ten years later, they changed hands, the, the uh, manager, they painted them over. Mural can last one day or eternity, right? So here's an, uh, I thought I'd show you some things going on in Boca, because you're Boca Knights. The Boca Express Train Museum from the Boca Raton Historic Society at the Count O'Hurley Pavilion. That's South Dixie on the west side of the street by that train, that streamlined train. This is the sketch. 300 tiles we fired. And not only did we paint on these tiles, but we had all these sponsors' names. 
that was hard. <laughs> we had to go to a printer and get lettering and put the lettering on and then bake the tile and peel the lettering off. Similarly with the tape. And when we pulled the lettering off, it was left with white lettering. And that's still there. This will be there a long time, thank goodness, because it's permanent. Here we are with the mayor, Steve L. Brams, Abrams, Sean Terrell, who also just wished me a happy birthday from Pennsylvania. <laughs> I'm doing murals over can uh, Old School Square on canvas, and here we just used markers and then went to make a watercolor. And I have a lot of uh, volunteer artists. We just went recently to Pine Grove Elementary School. We painted nine murals. So these grants I was getting from the Cultural Council, we, we did right on Lake Ida Road without the city's approval, 11 portables. Why stop at one when there's 11? Actually, one year we did seven and we went back and did the other four. Now, you look at this and say, oh, that's fish. But the Montessori method is really one, two, three. It's parent, child, teacher. And when you go to school, it's only three grades. You have the same teacher for like two or three years. So this one, two, three, where you see one starfish, no, you see two star. you see one angel, two starfish, and three dolphin. The one, two, three was symbolic of the Montessori method. Here we have in Lake Worth, these are there right now. We have the nine arch murals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In fact, this was almost going to be the Cultural Council building. I'm glad they chose the Art Deco one. And here I am painting my little arch. And this is the one that made the cover of my build, uh, book. When you write for Arcadia, you don't get to pick the cover of the book. So the first book, Art Deco, I hated the cover. It didn't really look Art Deco to me, and I didn't understand you know, why they were doing that. And they said, well, we like people on the cover. And when I wrote this book, they picked the cover, and they wrote me an email. Do you think you could get permission from this person to be on the cover of the book? And I wrote back, I'm pretty sure I can get permission. <laughs> Craig McGinnis, Eduardo Mendieta, Jennifer Shapiro. She's a female artist. Watch out for her. She's painting all over town. So Nicole Henry, in 2015, developed this thing called Outdoor Canvas Museum, like an outdoor museum. She brought 10 international artists into West Palm. All at once in the week in November, like Thanksgiving week, they painted 10 murals. That's a lot. And all of a sudden, everything changed. They went back again. Now you have 20 murals in West Palm Beach. She got thrown out of West Palm Beach. In 2017, she went to Lake Worth where you saw the Cobra mural. But this year, they kind of threw her out of Lake Worth and said, you know what, why don't we just do local artists and why don't we just, why don't we just do our own thing? We don't need you to bring international artists. And you know, the, the area artists kind of resent why are you bringing in all these international people when, when we can be highlighted. So uh, whether, whatever your opinion is, the art still remains and, and is, uh, lovely and interesting. And I have this picture with the people so you can really see the scale of the art. And she has a map showing you where it is and gets a lot of publicity, which is all good. So this is an interesting building in West Palm Beach on Avernia Street. This is the uh, Alexander Loft Apartments. Well, this mural was painted by a California artist, Tristan Eaton, and it fell onto this law office, all the bricks. And he had to come and repaint it just recently, 2016. And he kept the theme, but can you imagine having to paint the same building twice? So we're back in Boca, Boca Raton Elementary School, 2002. We did the whole cafeteria in a rainforest theme. Look at all the paint. You have to cover drop claws everywhere. There's my Papa Ruby, Papa. Uh, painted with me when he retired about 30 for the last 35 years he's gone now but he was a great artist and here we are here's the Boca Raton Elementary School and we used again those same colors the secondary colors 
purple, orange, and green. And wherever they put a fire hydrant, I put a tree. If they put a clock and a water fountain, I put a waterfall. And a uh, beautiful mural. I have no idea if it's still there. We should go look. <laughs> then they said, oh, after we're all done and cleaned up and we moved out, they said, oh, come back, come back. And we had to get a scissor lift, and we did the front lobby on the stairwell. We had to get a high scissor lift to paint the stars. And no one's ever seen this. I just scanned these in last night, because I said it's Boca. We did Del Prado Elementary School with the Cultural Council. This was a very big cafeteria. Eagles Landing Middle School, way out west, did the whole school. This was also concrete block, and it was painted in oil base. And I only work in water base, so we had to prime, reprime the whole building in water base so I could paint murals on top. And this was a tile water fountain, so we put contact paper over it so the mural would go through rather than have a big white thing there. And this also is under the water, on the land, in the sky, always trying to have an educational theme in our murals. Second floor, you know, 300 foot hallway. Now we're on planets. We're still in Eagles Landing Middle School. Lagos Run Middle School, the L and the R. We did a lot of murals there. We camouflaged the door. Here's your, they wanted a logger for Lagos Run. Here we camouflaged another door. We painted all the walls. We did one side um, the sailboats and one side the coral reef. And then one day they decided they didn't want the door anymore. So they plastered up the wall and me and Papa came back and we restored the mural. I got more money to restore that little piece than paint the whole mural. <laughs> Times had changed. Sunrise Park Elementary School, which is next to Eagle's Landing in Boca Raton. Here we did it, the whole lobby also. Here we went from land to the sky, the planets. Cafeteria, look at the before and after, right? This is the before and this is the after. How do you get up there? How do you make a circle? It wasn't easy. How did I paint these multicultural faces? I guess I, I got scaffolding. And I don't like to paint brown faces and white faces. I like to paint purple and green faces. I like creativity. Where's your, you know, if you paint something realistic, that's great. But where's the creativity? That's just your talent. You know, we, we, we need the creativity and our imagination and have fun with art. Make people happy. So much sadness in the world. So here at the Boca Raton YMCA, like I got paid just to paint this mural, but of course I extended off to this side, and this side was over here. You always paint more. Why stop? Right? You have the paint out, keep going. So now I'm going to go through one whole project with you, real fast, because we're almost done. Because I'm showing you like one mural in a school, but what does a whole school project look like? So in 2007, Schenkel Schultz built this Art Deco school that I call Deco Metric, because it's not historic Art Deco. We see the stepping up, we see the one, two, three, we see the bandings, the stripes. Okay, so here's a sketch. There we are transferring the, the, the project. Notice how it goes around all the walls. Okay, this is the one that's in the book. This is the one that they won an award for. Schenkel Schultz won awards, the rounded corners, the one, two, three stripes. And what do they want in their media center? They want more books. They want, a, they want like there's not enough books on the shelves. They want people reading the books. <laughs> So okay, we'll paint an Art Deco building, all outlined in gold and silver metallic, nice and flat, stylized, simplified. And now we're in the cafeteria, and there's no air conditioning, and it's banging, the alarm is banging, bang, 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 bang. And we have the scaffolding and the ladders, and, and we're painting, and we see the stepping down, and the one, two, three, and the gold and metallic markers. Here we see more concrete block, and we see more Art Deco. Here they had a New York skyline theme in the cafeteria, even though the Stingray was their logo. We see every wall, it goes on every wall. There's Papa. Every wall, it just goes around and around, never stops. Here's a whole hallway, this is about 300 foot hallway. Notice the tape pulled off the whole wall, what did I do? I made one stripe instead. See, one stripe. 
music, art, just ge geometric shapes, uh, ceramics, more music. So then we, every showcase, every window, I just started designing uh, geometric abstracts without any sketches. This is the uh, gymnasium, scaffolding. This, this is the picture in the book, but what about the sides? Here, see, this is something no one ever sees. Here's the whole side of the building with their stingray. Here's the other side. You always wrap things around a corner. Why not give the, the girls in the gymnasium some dance? And we just keep painting and painting and painting and painting. <laughs> Each one is a masterpiece. So even though I painted like 50 murals in this school, the architect wanted to do the administration lobby. But it turned out he couldn't. <laughs> this was his sketch. He took a July calendar and cut the woman in half. There's her legs. But he wanted this car. So I put the car in, and then I felt complete. I did the whole school. Another school wanted Art Deco. This is before the outlining. It looks like it's all done, but without the gold and silver. There I am, outlining. And uh, this principal said, paint whatever you want, wherever you want, every wall, and we just went for it. Indian Ridge is a special needs K through 12 school. The, the, the kids might have like two kids in a class or four kids in a class. We're almost done, thank you for bearing with me. And we have this Westwood Elementary School, three dimensional murals. Why, why you stop at just one, you know, flat walls? So this was my little sketch, reading takes you around the world. And this is about two inches that you fit in your hand. A little sketch, these little pop-up books. And this is the door and windows. Just to make a realistic sketch, how would you know what size to make it? What if you made it too big or too small? So we had to make templates and get scissor lifts and ladders just to make a template and stand back and look to see if it was the right size, if it fit, right? To make sure it fit around this air, air duct. Make sure it fit around this air duct. And, it, and we worked it out. This is my backyard. You, you, you do so much planning and negotiating and contract writing. We had three weeks <laughs> to make it. They didn't care. We've been for not, six months talking about the mural. They gave me three weeks. It had to be open for the first day of class when the teachers got back. Here we got by Egypt. This, this was uh, reading around the world, the, the landmarks. This is a history of Africa. There I am climbing up. And then we painted the whole atrium. It was a four-story atrium, a brand new gorgeous school. Here we're installing on a Sunday morning because it had to be done for Monday. <laughs> we had Rick Blue even make a three-dimensional globe in this circular atrium. And there it is. Very proud of it. There's, there's the air duct. We turned into a hot air balloon. Very right? beautiful. And there's the rest of it. You can see how high, even the clock, we, all the details. Art in Public Places hired me of uh, Palm Beach County to, to go out Belgrade. Eight weeks I went, eight visits. We did actual portraits of the students and then we filled in things like lightning and stars and money, things that they wanted in their portraits. We used warm and cool colors. And this is what it looks like today. And if you go out past there, you'll see this on the main road, Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Road. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's like an 80-foot mural. It's pretty big. But murals don't always have to be painted, and they don't always have to last forever. We did this twice. Uh, 15,000 impatient flowers. We took kids' designs. I designed the grid. I had to count how many flowers. So I ordered like 5,000 yellow and 1,300 turquoise and all, all the different colors. This is an A-frame. It's on both sides. And for three months, the city would come and water it. It would be called a living wall. We did it in 2000 and 2003, right in Veterans Park uh, Fountain, right on the Intracoastal Flower Festival. Mural sometimes could be a video just superimposed on under the bridge as Cheryl Mader did for Submerged 2015. This is West Palm, the underpass. When I was a chairperson for many years of the Public Art Advisory Board in Delray Beach, 
Public Art Advisory Board, we hired Michi Kokurasu to do this panel that changed colors as the ocean uh, waves and the music and the color. So it goes from like green to blue to orange and changes colors. They also planted, her father uh, does the landscaping at the Murakami Museum and there's also some landscaping here. Okay, right now Boca Raton has its public art board, okay? Boca Raton Art in Public Places, and they just had their first project, and if, if any of you have seen it, at Gumbo Limbo Nature Center, they have six artists. Craig McGinnis, who we saw at the Nine Arch Mural, P Peter Agerty, and Christine is from Del Rey. And they did this great, fun mural around the perimeter in the parking lot of Gumbo Limbo. It's brand new, you should go see it. So what's coming up next? What are you doing next, Sharon, right? Art in the Alley, our ninth annual, right? Get artists to volunteer, we paint on panels, and we hang them in an alley. We clear an alley. There I did the jazz man. Here's someone actually painted the alley. There's the alley with the fences. There's Lisa and James, they run the alley, I run the art, her father, Jack Dickerson. So we're gonna paint February 9th in the alley. Deb LaFog is uh, doing an animal here, a bird. Sharon Halepka White. And here's everyone painting. It's a real happening. You come on by and watch us paint. We have music and food. It's just relaxing. Everyone kind of does their thing. This year the thing will be Tropic Alley at the Aloft. The IPIC Theater is opening up, and next to it is the Aloft Hotel. We're going to be hanging our panels in the Aloft Hotel, Delray Beach project. We, we're going to probably have it March 24th will be the party. We're confirming the date now. But paint is February 9th, all day. Do you have a flyer on that somewhere here? Uh, Artinthealley.org. Artinthealley.org or bysharon.com. Uh, and you can always reach me on the flyer you have there. We took this little wall two years ago. It was Valentine's Day. We called it Heart in the Alley. I just painted the whole background. That improved it. And then we hung the art. You can see all the hearts everybody made. Heart in the Alley, big party. Last year's theme was Cats in the Alley. Here's the party. We all dressed up as cats and dogs. We have a good time at the party. Sunday, uh, Saturday, February 9th. I, the party will not be on the 24th. I just found out today. So the party was to be announced, but we're, first we're going to paint on February 9th, the same day the Norton opens. And thank you all for coming. Hey. Any questions? Do we have any questions about mural painting? Terrific. Well, we'd love to have you, uh, if, I have samples of the book for you to look at. You could buy it at the, at the gift shop, and I'll come back and sign it. Or, or answer any questions or have a business card. 